In this tutorial, we're going to set up a couple of templates using Google Slides. So once you're in your Google Drive, uh, just go ahead and click New, New Slide. Now there's a few parameters we would like to put in place. Um, now it determines how your entire portfolio will be set up. So when you come into a blank template like this, you can choose themes and so on if you want fancy background colors or fonts. Uh, I'm just going to close that for now and I'm going to delete everything that's on the page. So we've just got a blank slate. What we're going to do firstly is we're just going to make sure we title. Um, so this is just going to be template and I'm just going to say this is a portfolio and we're going to keep this one at A4. So you can do an A3 or A4. Uh, A3 tends to present better um, when it's printed. Uh, however, A4 is just as suitable. So the first thing we actually need to do is change the size of the page to A4. So if we go to file, page setup, we can see it's at widescreen because obviously it's for a presentation. So click custom. Then you'll see centimeters. We can then put in our um, page dimensions. If you don't know what they are, just Google um, A4 or A3 page size. And then that will change. Now you've got this. One last thing is you can see up here, I've got um, centimeters. If you don't have centimeters, you're going to have to click your little icon and change your account to Australian, uh, English Australian. So you've got centimeters, otherwise the presets inches. All right, so with the portfolio, we need a couple of things straight off the bat. We need to always have a consistent heading. We need to know what size it's going to be and um, where it's going to be positioned. So we can go ahead and create a few guidelines and that will help us lay out our page. So we go view and then you'll see this thing that says guides. Now we've got all these different options. You can edit and you can change their colors. You can add more. Um, well, let's click show guides, see what we've got to start with. Now. If you were to do a, an A3, you would definitely want a center guideline so you can split your page into two A4 pages. Now, I also like to set out templates horizontally or in that landscape uh, mode. So they're just easy to uh, navigate when you're looking at a picture-based portfolio. Now, I'm gonna drag that. You can just click and drag these guidelines. I'm gonna drag that one to the top. I'm gonna just drag it down, say 2.5 centimeters, because that's plenty of space to put a heading. We might even reduce that later. We're just going to play around until we find uh, an adequate zone. Now on the left hand side, we're gonna have this spiral bound because an a, uh, a portfolio needs to be printed for HSC. So we're going to make sure we've got enough space for that spiral bound. So I'm gonna go 1.5 centimeters and that'll give us a nice uh, edge there. Now you've got multiple options. You can right click on the guide and you can then add or edit them. Uh, so you can change colors if you'd like to, um, or you can just go up to the view uh, guides and then add it and edit more. So I'm just gonna add another one in, and this is gonna be on my right side. I'm gonna click and drag it over there, and then I'm just gonna come back one centimeter. And you can see I've just hit that one centimeter mark using my rule up the top there. Uh, and I'm gonna put one down the bottom. And this is the re really, we're just wanting these for bleed lines. Um, so we're basically making sure that we've got, I'm gonna drop that back a little bit. We've got a nice clean edge, so we don't have any text cut off at the end. Um, we're also gonna put a page number down the bottom, so insert, and then we can go um, slide numbers, and they're automatic. We can skip that first one if we want to, but that'll just come up nicely down the bottom. Uh, you always want a page number just in case your printed version gets um, pulled apart by accident, um, so you know exactly where each page is situated. Next thing we need to do is dedicate a spot for our um, evaluations, no, ongoing evaluation, no matter what course you're doing, industrial technology, design and technology, you always have to do ongoing evaluation. Now, we can set a guideline for that, so we know where we're gonna put it to start with, so let's just go add a, a horizontal guide, and then we can drag that up from that line and give ourselves enough space. Now that's probably an adequate enough space to put a, a decent paragraph in. Uh, and the next thing we do is we can actually not use a text box. Now text box disappears. So like I'll show you an example, put a text box there, I click off it, now it's disappeared. So we're the template that's pretty inefficient to see how your, your page is laid out. 
So the, a better way of doing it is just inserting a single cell table. So you go insert table, single cell. That gives me a nice uh, clean outline border. And what you do is when you turn the guides off, you'll be able to actually see that's where that single cell table was. So I'm just going to put those guides back on. Now, it's really important to make that prominent, that evaluation section is prominent. So I'm just going to change that for this purpose. I'm going to change that to a, a red color. So every time we have got text in here, it's going to be red. Now let's, uh, let's go ahead and create our um, heading structure. So again, insert single cell table. So we go to table, single cell. Now we can do this and throughout the portfolio, we can write all our headings, but I'm just gonna create them here and then I'm gonna move uh, just a plain text box because I don't wanna see this border. I just wanna have it here for a minute. So I'll delete this in a minute, but let's type in our first heading structure. So we're gonna go title. Uh, so that's our title heading. We're gonna go um, subheading one, subheading two, and subheading, oh, and then let's go just normal text. Now we can choose our typography. So highlight that and then you can choose whatever you want. Say I want this, but I wanna make that my main heading. So I'm gonna go something nice and clean, something quite big. So that'll be that. And then I'm gonna also make it bold so it stands out on my page. My subheading, um, I'm gonna do the same font, but this time I'm just gonna go make it a little bit smaller and I'm gonna make it bold and italicized. And then the last one, I'm going to go ahead and just change that to same heading, uh, same type. Um, and then we are just going to keep it a little bit smaller, no italics. And then last one is our normal. So we wanna make sure this is no smaller than Times New Roman. So if we go down to Times New Roman and we go Times New Roman 12, and we can see that's the size of it. So if I just type in normal text next to it, and I can then choose what main type of uh, font that I'd like. So Arial, yep, it's equivalent, it's, it's the same. Um, it can't be any smaller uh, than Times New Roman. So they're all pretty good. Um, say I wanted this one, I just want it clean. So I'm gonna get rid of the Times New Roman and that's gonna be my normal text. So there's my heading structure uh, and typography structure. So then we're gonna use those exact same ones throughout the, the templates that we create. So first thing is we need to make sure we have a specific spot for our heading. So I'm just going to create a text box and I'm gonna put it between our guides there and I'm gonna drag it out so it's in line. Now when you can see that red line, that indicates that basically it's matching the guideline there uh, once it's actually pasted in. I'm gonna paste that heading in. So copy, control C, control V, and there it is. Now I need a, a spot for my subheadings. So I'm going to then insert another guideline. So you've got multiple ways. Remember, you can right click on a guide and then drag it in, or you can just insert guide. So we're gonna insert another text box just underneath in that spot. I'm gonna get that subheading one, double click in that text box and situate it there. Now you can see that the blue lines underneath, I'm gonna drag that up. So it is in line with that bottom guideline that I've got there. So I'll move this one out of the way so we can sort of see what I'm sort of doing. And then the last two, obviously we've got our subheading two. Uh, it's very rare that you will use a subheading two, but it's good to have it just in case. And then you've got your normal text. So subheading two, again, we put in a small guideline. Now you can change these, you can move them, you can make them wherever you'd like. Uh, it just depends on your layout. Now your layout determines uh, how much information you can fit on the screen. So paste that there. I'm gonna drag that one up. Um, actually, I'm gonna pull it down. 
So I'm going to drag my guideline there so it matches that box. So you can see we've got it nice and clean on the left and then we've got clear spot for all of our information. Some headings might take up that entire thing so that's why that text box is going across. Our subheadings very rarely do because remember that this, they're all based on the marking criteria. Uh, you don't determine the heading, you just choose the, the, the heading straight off the marking criteria appropriate to the page you're developing. And then the last section we need to actually create is just for our normal text. So I'll move this off to the side, create a text box. Now, if you are doing a single page, like an entire page worth of text, you can just do a, a single um, one like that. Now I'm gonna delete this, don't need it anymore. Uh, and the last thing is uh, I'm gonna put a subheading in here to indicate this is our evaluation spot. So I might wanna use uh, the subheading too because it's a smaller heading and I'll put that in there and you can already see this uh, text box that's already in there is incorrect if we were looking at our sizing for normal text so remember our normal text is calibre 12 so I want to make sure that that text box is calibre 12 before we duplicating anything else we're going to create a subheading paste that in there and I'm going to call that evaluation because it's never going to change. And then we make sure that yes, it is, um, is it correct? Uh, basically, we just got to make sure the rest of that box is our normal text. So that is your first plain template. Now, if you are uh, doing this for HSC, you would include other things such as your student number. So you might include that right up the top here or right down the bottom, wherever you'd like really, just make it consistent and it's easy. Now that's our plain text. It's very rare that you're gonna use a solid um, text box like this, but it gives us our first template. Second is our next template. So right click, duplicate, because we wanna keep everything exactly the same. We're just gonna change this section here we're gonna add uh, a table. So this is gonna be for all of our um, research. A lot of our research is done, uh, such as criteria to value success. You have to have all your different criteria and then columns to indicate. So we would insert our tables and then you can just determine how many cells you want. So say I want that many. Um, now we don't need this subheading or this text here, but I'll leave it for a bit while we create this. So I want our subheadings, one, 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 one. You could do subheading two, it doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent. Now that might be too big. You might go, no, I don't like that at all. I want the subheading two. And then you just replace it. And you can highlight the whole lot and paste it in. So then obviously we can distribute rows, we can do all sorts of stuff. But basically this page is going to be made up of tables. So I want text in here. Um, I'll have text in all these cells, make sure it's the same. Otherwise you could insert pictures, doesn't really matter. I can then delete this normal text section. I can then move my table, smash, locking it up under my guidelines uh, and then making it as big as I need it. And I don't want this section that big, so I drag that up and obviously we can just manipulate it until we've got it uh, what we would like. So that looks pretty good. So you could include uh, a series of images or you could change these up. It doesn't really matter as long as you know this is the formatting. Now, I, I usually like to have my headings up here with a nice little color just to indicate, hey, this is a heading section. Um, and you can sort of then differentiate, oh, okay, this, what do we need in there? Remember looking at your marking criteria, it would indicate what are you actually putting in these cells. Uh, another template, so remember you can duplicate, right click duplicate, and you might wanna split your page up nice and simply. So you've got a picture based template. So that's a table-based template, you want a picture-based one. So I'm gonna delete that, and then we're going to insert a section where we could have a picture and some text. 
So we can do that a couple of ways. Remember, we can go insert single cell tables or multiple tables. Um, so we want to just use a single cell table. And this can be our section for our picture. And then we, if you hover across, you should be able to get a center point. Uh, if not, this is where you a good another good guideline to put in is a center point guideline. So right click, uh, insert that vertical, and then just drag it over until it goes red, and that's our center point. So we can then sort of indicate that's how big I want my image, and I can just then um, change my layout and location of my text there, and I'm just going to say image because that's where you'd put it, um, or you could have multiple you could have a, a series of images so there's one image um, remember you've got your uh, image size minimums so if you look at your guidelines on the nest website it'll tell you how big uh, the images need to be so we could have one there we could have one underneath and then we just move it into location and then we could have some text on the sides it doesn't really matter you just look at some example portfolios from all the different resources that are available and then uh, I've used the wrong text, so I want to delete that. I want to insert a single cell table. Uh, you want to use um, the examples to sort of guide your creation of your templates. So the reason we make these templates is so we can be consistent in our formatting. Um, so say you wanted that multiple times, you can just copy it. Control C, Control V, move it across. Where do we need it? That's where I want it. And then we should be basically done. We're just going to delete this one. Now, when it gives you that indicator, it's going to change the size. So I want the four directional arrow. So make sure you get the right arrow. And then we've got our series. So we could then have normal text in here. Remember, see, it's automatically changing. We can set our text if we'd like to, but I'm just going to go back to this one, Control C. I'm going to make sure we've got normal text in here. So then when we do write, we can improve it. If we wanted a subheading there, we could change the subheading and then obviously normal text. So there's a series of templates. This would be a good start. Um, so you've got a plain text one where you could split your page multiple sections. Um, you've got headings and that's really good for any types of research, materials research or testing research. And then you've got image based ones which is good for sort of record or production or just showing your design process. So there's a series there you can have a look at, develop and then you can uh, improve and develop a more designed aspect of it. But it, as long as you've got the few things, consistent heading um, and consistent subheading and text and that specific spot for evaluation. The last thing I want to note is when you actually shut down your Google slide and then you come back to it, the guides aren't automatically on. So you will need to go to show guides and you will need to click them on every time you open up uh, your slides.